back. You're, you're wasting your time, Doctor. There's not much you can do for me. You can make it if you try. I, I don't want to make it like this. Leave me alone, please. Case for the base hospital. These are wonderful letters, Johnny. You're lucky to have a girl like Rosemary to go back to. Is she pretty? I've never seen her. You haven't? But she sounds as though she's in love with you. We've been writing to each other. She saw her name in this book. Rosemary, dearest, it's your birthday, darling. And even if you can't be with us just now, we have your picture. We have our thoughts of you. She's the most beautiful creature in the world. Didn't she, Ivy? Of course she is. Sometimes I can hardly believe that she's my daughter. You may turn on the lamps and we'll drink a birthday toast. Thank you, Hilda. Happy birthday, darling. Happy birthday, Rosemary. She'll be so happy. Johnny is coming home to her at last. Hilda. Yes? I... I know you won't like my saying it, but... if that young man comes here... I be. There's nothing to worry about. I won't interfere with them. I'll show you that I know how to mind my own business. And you just mind yours. Of course I will, Hilda. I always have, haven't I? It couldn't be Johnny. His telegram said tomorrow. He said he couldn't get here until tomorrow. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Dr. Schuyler phoned and said he was sending the new doctor around to introduce himself. 
What's his name? Ross, I think. Uh, Leslie Ross. Have him come right in. Hilda, here is Dr. Ross. Dr. Ross, how nice of... Good evening, Mrs. Blake. I must apologize for not coming earlier, but Dr. Schuyler and I have been pretty busy getting you settled in my new practice. A woman, Doctor. I'm sorry. But if they're going to take all the men into the service, I'm afraid we women will have to learn to put up with each other. You seem awfully young. <laughs> well, I'll do the best I can to get over that. Hilda, Dr. Ross has to catch a train to San Francisco. She came here just to do Dr. Schuyler a favor. You did take me by surprise. Doctor. Well, unfortunately, that happens to me rather often. You see, people aren't quite used to women doctors. It isn't that. I was thinking of my daughter. It's her birthday today. She's lovely. Do you really think so? Of course she is. The portrait is good, of course, but no painter could capture the real rosemary. Would you like a glass of sherry, Doctor? No, thank you. I must catch my train, you know. But I'll be back in a couple of days to officially take over Dr. Schuyler's practice. Who painted the portrait? A Polish refugee. I never could pronounce his name. Poor fellow, he died last year. Well, Doctor, what did Dr. Schuyler tell you about me? Oh, very little. However, he did say that since I'm to be the only doctor in town, I'd better get acquainted with you as you're apt to need me. Why should I need you? We're both in very good health. Really? I thought perhaps your condition... My I... dear, I do not need a doctor now. Nor do I expect to need one in the future. Thank you. Mrs. Blake, I'm not trying to force myself on you. If you resent a woman doctor as much as you seem to, I'll certainly be sure not to come here again uninvited. I'll be sure, Dr. Ross, to the door. I can find my own way out, thank you. Good night. Good night. Do you think you were very rude to her, Hilda? Of course I was. I meant to be. I don't like jealous women. Jealous? I could see the way she looked at Rosemary's picture. She hated her for being prettier than she is. Tickets, please. Good evening, Sergeant. Glad to be back. Certainly am. Hmm? Monte Flores, huh? Nice little town. Do you live there? No. I'm on my way to visit someone. Well, good luck. Good evening. Oh, good evening. I'm sorry. I mean... Was there something about my book? Yes. I hope you won't misunderstand, but... Will you tell me your name? Uh, surely. I'm Leslie Ross. And the book reminded me of someone. For a moment, I thought you might be the... Well, it's somebody I never saw, just heard about. <laughs> that must have been a pretty strange expression on my face. <laughs> I admit I would have jumped if you'd said boo in the middle of that stare. <laughs> I've really not in the habit of going about frightening women and children. But incidentally, my name is John Meadows. But you needn't pay any attention if you prefer to read while you eat. Oh, not at all. I've read it so many times, I practically know it by heart. I have, too. You know, I guess that's true of almost everybody who likes the Shropshire lad. <laughs> I really don't see why you should pay for my dinner. I do. It's one of the biggest moments of my life. You know, you're the first girl I've been able to buy anything for for almost two years. Was it as much fun as you thought it would be? More. Gee, I've had a swell time. <laughs> so have I. You know, there, there's something I'd like to know about you. Somehow, I, I have the feeling that you must do something and do it pretty well, too. Well, it's no use. I might as well confess. Brace yourself, Sergeant. I'm a doctor. A doctor? Oh, please don't say it that way. I'm trying to cure myself of feeling like a freak. 
You see, most people feel that female doctors should be seen only in cages. Well, I don't. Only it's a little hard to think of anyone as attractive as you are being a doctor. <laughs> well, I'm afraid it'll be years before I can get over the handicap of what I look like. That's a handicap a lot of women would give years for. <laughs> Thank you. But I've even thought of wearing a false beard during office hours. You see, I'm taking over practice in a small town called Monteflores. Monteflores? Yes, have you heard of it? That's where I'm going. I wonder if you happen to know... <laughs> Tape. Right here, Doctor. Will you help her out? All right, now, just take it easy, take it easy. So? There's an ambulance coming, Doctor. Why don't you leave this case to them? Please don't bother me. The ambulances are here. You can knock off now. What? You can rest now. Oh. You can take over now, Doctor. Come on, Leslie. You get in. I'll get our luggage and the driver. All right. Sure. It's easy to give a fellow orders. The chief says, take the doc and his friend to the nearest hotel. Get them room, bath, tickets on the first train tomorrow, and a couple of drinks. I says, okay, I can promise the drinks. But the rooms? Don't he know there's a war going on? Hey, Sarge. Yeah? Ain't you kind of young to be a doctor? Here's the best doctor this side of the Solomon. Oh, that's good to hear, even if it isn't true. I'm not kidding. I've seen doctors work under conditions you wouldn't believe. And I want to tell you that tonight you were right in their class. Well, praise like that, Sergeant, is praise indeed. Johnny, what's the matter? I'll be all right. Let's not change the subject. I was trying to tell you how swell I think you are. You're kind, Johnny, but I'm very tired. I've had what you might call a hectic day. Yeah, guess a little sack duty wouldn't hurt anybody. Sack duty? It's a marine word for hitting the hay. Oh. Good night, Doctor. Good night. But, Johnny, these aren't office hours, so you don't have to call me Doctor. Good night, Leslie. Good morning. Good morning. Want to order, ma'am? A little later, thanks. Here's your Joe, sir. Thanks. Joe? That's a Marine word for coffee. <laughs> the Marines have a word for everything, haven't they? Almost everything. What's the Marine word for what's troubling you? They don't have a word. Look, Johnny. We got to know each other because of the train accident. And we... Well, what I'm trying to say is, you don't have to do any explaining. But I want to explain. See, I started to tell you on the train when the smash-up came. All right, Johnny. Well, that business about the book wasn't a gag. I picked it up at the Red Cross. It was a girl's name on the flyleaf. I liked the book, so I wrote to her. She wrote to me, and there was something in the way we thought and the way we saw things. That's why you thought I might be the girl? When you saw my copy of the Shropshire Lad? Yeah. Of course, all I know about her is that she lives in Montefleurus in a house on top of a cliff with her mother. On top of a cliff? Is her name Blake? Yes, Rosemary Blake. Do you know her? No. No, but I've seen her picture. She's lovely, Johnny. Uh, Leslie, her letters saved my life. I didn't have much to come back to. It was... It was only the thought of Rosemary that... it finally gave me any reason to live. It's just one of those things that happen only in war. 
I know exactly how things can happen in war. Or accidents. Of course you must see her. Goodbye. You know something, Johnny? I've given hundreds of books to the Red Cross, and not once did I think to put in my name and address. I only wish I'd known they were going to guys like you. do I have to tell you that the flowers in Rosemary's room are to be changed every day? I'm sorry, Hilda. Go, bring fresh flowers at once. Wouldn't you be ashamed now if Rosemary came home unexpectedly and found dead flowers in her room? Someone's coming. Hurry now. careful with the car up here. And that's no kidding, Sergeant. Yeah, it certainly isn't. Can you keep the change? Thanks. Does Miss Rosemary Blake live here? Yes, but I'm afraid she isn't at home. Well, I telegraphed. I'm John Meadows. Of course. I I'm Miss Miller, Mrs. Blake's companion. I'm afraid Rosemary may not be back today. Uh, well, can you tell me when she will come back? You'd better come in. Come right in. Mrs. Blake? Yes, Mr. Meadows. Or would you rather I called you Sergeant? Oh, yes, Mr. does sound a little strange. All right, then I'll call you Johnny. Well, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't. Sit here and have some tea with me. Thank you. Mrs. Blake, I, I don't know if Rosemary told you that we... Uh... <laughs> I think it might be easier for both of us if I tell you at once that Rosemary keeps no secrets from me. She's told me everything about your correspondence. Can't tell you how much it meant to me out there, Mrs. Blake. And to Rosemary. I don't want to seem like a prying mother, but would you tell me what it was about Rosemary's letters that made you think you were in love with her? Well, that's not easy to say. It's... Well, it's the way she thinks, the way she looks at things. <laughs> I just can't seem to put it in the words. I think I can understand. Uh, Miss Miller told me that Rosemary isn't here. Oh, I am so sorry about that, but it just couldn't be helped. She'll be back in a few days. She'll telephone. I know how difficult it is going to be for you, waiting. <laughs> Not at all. I imagine a few days here in Montefiore will be very restful. Surely. By the way, did Rosemary uh, send you a picture of herself? No, she didn't. Well, I don't think that was very nice of her. Well, she said she didn't have a good one. I'm afraid she wasn't telling you the entire truth. She has a picture, and a very good one, too. I'm going to show it to you after we've had tea. Yes, I... I'd like to see it very much. Sit down, Johnny. I 
This is one time I don't mind you eavesdropping at all, Ivy. I wasn't. I... You seem very nervous. Well, I've, I've got one of my headaches. Oh, I'm sorry. I wanted you to do something for me. Well, it's not too bad. What was it? Johnny is going to see Rosemary's picture for the first time. Go to the living room. Draw the shades. Make the room as dark as you can. Right away? Yes, yes, yes. Hilda. Go ahead, Ivy. You can't go through with this. I won't have any interference. I like that boy and Rosemary is going to like him. I won't let anything happen to spoil his chances with her. I want that completely understood. You wouldn't dare interfere. I didn't mean anything. Now go ahead. Do as you're told. And then leave us alone. What you expected, Johnny? I never imagined anything as lovely. Except Rosemary. Johnny! Johnny! Help! Ivy! Johnny! Thompson, what's new? Nothing's ever new with people. They get the same headaches year in and year out. <laughs> Here, have some coffee. Thanks. Tell me, why is a female doctor funny? I'm a nurse, not a quiz show. I only think it's funny when you're not one yourself. Yeah, like being seasick. Tommy, better drink up and get on your horse again. Who is it this time? In every town, there's always one. She thinks she's the queen mother and the queen father to boot. This one, my dear doctor, is called Mrs. Morton Blake. Mrs. Blake? She certainly must be sick to call me. Well, here we go again. See you later, Tommy. Good luck. <laughs> oh, doctor, my daughter's fiancé, he's back. I don't know. He... Leslie. Leslie? Do you know him? We met. We were on the same... on the same train. Don't worry. I think I'll be all right in a few minutes. No, you stay right here until we can arrange to have you moved upstairs. Thank you very much, Doctor. I'll stop in again tomorrow. Don't put yourself to any trouble. Unless you think it's necessary. I assure you I wouldn't come back unless I thought it was necessary. Of course. Bye, Doctor. Goodbye. I want to talk to you. Why, of course. When, when can I see you? Whenever you like. And I'll come to the office tomorrow. Please don't say anything about it to Mrs. Blake. Of course not, if you don't want me to. Thank you, Doctor. What are you doing out there? Nothing. I, I, I just came out for a moment. You're lying. You talked to that woman. No, no, I didn't, Hilda. I, I didn't even see her. Hey, we call us a real character out there from that Blake menagerie. 
Hey, my Vivy Miller. Got time for her? Have I? Bring her in if you have to drag her. Okay, you're the doctor, as the saying goes. Will you come in, please, Miss Miller? Won't you come in? Dr. Ross, Now, there's no reason to be nervous, Miss Miller. No, I, I know, but uh, please sit down. But it's just as I told you, I'm having terrible trouble getting to sleep. If there's anything you can give me that will... Well, I'm afraid it would be a little difficult for me to prescribe anything. I know so little about you. Well, there's nothing seriously wrong with me. Really, there isn't. It's just that I'm... Well, it's just that I, I'm nervous, that's all. But there's always a reason for nervousness. People have problems, conflicts. Sometimes they're troubled by those about them. Well, it's nothing like that, Doctor. Mrs. Blake and I have been good friends for years. <laughs> well, I must say that yesterday you gave me the impression you wanted to tell me something important. I didn't mean to. I... I'm sorry. I must have been mistaken. I'll give you something to help you sleep. I... Dr. Ross. Yes? Well, I, I just hope it's strong. I, I really can't sleep. I think you'll find it strong enough. Now, you have to take this to Britain's drugstore. They're the only druggist in town that can fill it. Dr. Rush, you're right. I, I haven't told you why I really came here. I thought not. Now, why don't you sit down and tell me quietly? It's about Rosemary and Mrs. Blake. Pardon me. Hello? Oh, Mrs. Blake. No. No, she isn't. If she comes in, I'll be glad to give you a message. Yes, I understand. You'll have to excuse me now, Mrs. Blake. I'm really very busy. Goodbye. Well, what the heck did you do to her? She went out of here like a bat out of... Well, whatever bats go out of. What's it all about? I don't know yet. Get me the Britain drugstore, Tommy. I want to talk to Mr. Britton. I'm so clumsy. I do hope I didn't disturb you. Well, not at all. As a matter of fact, I was rather hoping you'd be around. Thank you. Is it all right for you to be out of bed? Oh, I'm feeling much better. Dr. Ross told me over the phone I might get up today. She's an awfully nice girl, isn't she, Mr. Meadows? I'm not Mr. Meadows, Miss Ivy. Johnny isn't a terribly hard word to say, is it? I'll try. <laughs> We'd certainly look funny if anyone came in right now, wouldn't we? Yeah. More or less as if we were in a high-class crap game using flowers for dice. <laughs> Miss Ivy, I wonder if you could tell me something that's very important to me. I will, if I can. When is Rosemary coming home? Didn't Mrs. Blake tell you? Well, I'll be frank with you, Miss Ivy. The reason I ask you is because Mrs. Blake doesn't seem to want to say. She may have her reasons, of course, but she keeps telling me to wait and that Rosemary will be here. But she won't tell me when. I don't know anything. You'll have to find out from Mrs. Blake. Well, there's something I'm sure you could tell me, however. Who painted Rosemary's portrait? I don't know. Well, you see, I studied painting in San Francisco before I joined up. I know that technique. Are you sure you don't know the name of the artist? No, I don't. But Mrs. Blake could tell you, Mr. Johnny. <laughs> okay, I'll ask her. Johnny, what are you doing out of bed? Mrs. Blake, I wonder if you could tell me... You don't have to tell me, because I know you went down to see Rosemary's portrait, didn't you? Who painted Rosemary's portrait, Mrs. Blake? I think I know the man who did it. Do you? Well, I can't recall his name, but I'm sure I know him. I have a surprise for you. Come.
Come in, Johnny. Come. This is Rosemary's room. Her own room. It really is beautiful, isn't it? She has wonderful taste, Johnny. Uh, Mrs. Blake, where is Rosemary? I've been here two days now and I still don't know. Johnny, I'll promise you, you'll see her. And soon. Come. I'll show you more of the real Rosemary. She has beautiful taste in everything. Can you smell the perfume? The rarest I could get for her. This perfume makes me feel almost as if she were here. Right with us in this room. Can you feel her presence here, Johnny? Mrs. Blake, I don't like being here. I feel as if we were spying or something. If you'll excuse me, I'd like to leave. Ivy, will you tell Mrs. Blake I'm going into town to see Dr. Ross? Oh, is anything wrong, Johnny? No, I'm fine. Well, if you'll wait, we'll drive you into town. No, thanks. A hike will do me good. Ivy, where did Johnny go? He went into town to see the doctor. Doctor? Why, is he here? I don't think so. What does she want with him? Ivy, get the car. Thank you, Doctor. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. We're doing better. <laughs> Don't flatter us. The only reason we're doing any better is because the poor fellow happened to get his hand caught in a mowing machine. I'm tired, Tommy. How about giving me some Joe? Giving you some what? Joe is marine slang for coffee. My, how you get around. <laughs> I ought to call the Blake House. Looks like the Blake House is coming to see you. Who? A randy dandy. A what? Nurse is slang for a marine. Hello, Johnny. How do you feel? Fine. There's something I want to talk to you about. I think I'd better have a look just the same. Well, all right. But I can tell you right now, I'm first rate. I'm practically a cured man. That's for the doctor to say. And when she's through saying, do you think she might be called upon for some non-professional advice? If it'll please the patient. But now the back. Leslie. Face down, please. Does that hurt? Looks a little sensitive, but that's not what bothers me. What does? That's where the non-professional advice comes in. You can get up now, Johnny. Leslie, there's something going on at the Blake house. Well, well, I just can't understand it. You're out of uniform, Sergeant. <laughs> Sorry. Now you can tell the doctor your troubles. I don't want to talk to a doctor. I want to talk to you. It's about Rosemary. She isn't back, is she? No, and that's what bothers me. Now, let's examine this calmly, Johnny. After all, you yourself are in a highly emotional state. And the feeling you have there being something wrong might be just your imagination. Now, when Rosemary comes home tomorrow or the next day, you'll find that everything is perfect. Perfectly natural. But there must be some reason Mrs. Blake keeps putting me off. There must be something the matter with Rosemary. Something her mother's afraid to tell me. Chances are she's visiting friends or away at college. No, I don't think so. There's something... I've got it. You've got what, Johnny? The portrait. Leslie, I thought I recognized that technique. I know somebody who could tell me about Rosemary. Good morning. Is Dr. Ross in? Yes, but she has a patient in her office now. If you'll uh, have a chair. Thank you. I'm positive it was Paul Arnheim. You see, we went to school together. When you mentioned college a while ago, it gave him his name, Paul Arnheim. And since he painted the girl, he knows her. I'm going to San Francisco to have a talk with him. 
What's the matter, Leslie? Cole? No. Somebody just walked over my grave. Leslie, listen to me. You know why I'm so keen about finding Rosemary? I have to find her to tell her I'm not in love with her. Because I'm in love with someone else. of the Medical Association. What are you going to do, Hilda? You're not going to hurt Dr. Ross. You mustn't plan anything to harm her. What you're planning to do is wicked and evil. There's only one wicked thing I know, Ivy. I will not permit anyone to come between Rosemary and Johnny. I don't care who it is. Dr. Ross? Or you? Hilda, think what you're saying. Answer the phone. Mrs. Blake's residence. Yes? That's very well. I'll tell her. Who is it? It's Mr. Meadows. He won't be back tonight. He's going to San Francisco. Give me that phone. Hello? Johnny? Johnny? Hello? Johnny! Hello. Good morning, Hilda. It's a lovely morning, isn't it? Yes, it is. Good morning. Hello? Yes, this is Mrs. Blake's residence. Hello, Dr. Ross. Yes, this is Miss Miller speaking. Yes, I just called to see how you were feeling. Good. Will you just keep on taking the prescription? No, there's nothing else I can think of for the moment. Are you sure there's nothing else? Nothing else? Who is it, Ivy? It's Dr. Ross. She wants to know how I'm feeling, that's all. Thank you for calling, Doctor. Goodbye. How very thoughtful of her. You must have a great deal of confidence in Dr. Ross. I do have. Take that away. You think she'll help you? Oh, yes. In what way? In many ways, Hilda. Light the fire.
I don't think the doctor will help you very much, Ivy. Why not? You seem very sure of yourself tonight. It's something new, it becomes you. I'm your friend, Hilda. And yet you defend that Leslie woman. What's so wrong, Hilda? Have you forgotten that John is engaged to Rosemary? Hilda, when will you stop saying that? And the letters, what about them? Letters? Why won't you face the fact? The fact is that I have a daughter. Hilda, sooner or later... Ev sooner or later? What? Everybody will know. Nothing can prevent it. Not even you. Hey, Ivy? Oh, Ivy. Darling. You know, I don't think you're really very bright. Hilda. It's all right, Ivy. There's nothing to worry about. We'll talk about this tomorrow, shall we? I'd like to try to get some sleep tonight. Night, Ivy. Sleep well. <laughs> You sounded so restless. I thought this milk would be good for you. You were never so thoughtful before, Hilda. I never realized before that I had such a good friend in you. If you'd only listen to me, Hilda, I am your good friend. Yeah, Ivy, it'll be good for you. No. No, I don't want it. Don't be foolish, Ivy, you silly child. It's only milk, look. Why should I want to harm you? Oh, forgive me, Hilda, forgive me. Try to forgive me. Please try to forget, do, please do. It'll break it. It'll be good for you. I am forgiven. You are my friend. It'll put you to sleep. Good night, Hilda. Find out. Doctor Ross, I. You seem surprised to see me, Mrs. Blake. Didn't Sergeant Meadows tell you I was coming? Well, he isn't here, but. Uh, Please, come in, anyway. He left a message with my nurse. He asked me to meet him here. He's in San Francisco. Well, I guess he expects to be back shortly. Come in, please. Why do you insist on staring at me? 
I'm sorry, Mrs. Blake, but I wasn't aware of it. Have you never seen anybody like me before? Perhaps you prefer that I'd wait for the sergeant in my car. Excuse me, I've been so upset these last days. Johnny's coming into the house, and Rosemary, my daughter, not here when he arrives. Children don't appreciate half the things that parents do for them. But Rosemary will be here soon, and everything will be over with. Except my loneliness. Mrs. Blake, I hope you don't mind my asking you a question. Of course not. Being a doctor, I'll accept your answer as a matter of confidence. What do you want to know? Is your daughter, by any chance, an adopted child? Well, <laughs> there's her portrait. Don't you see the resemblance? It's difficult to say. What do you mean? From a physiological point of view, it occurred to me that you might have been unable to bear a child. Well, <laughs> doctor, I'm certainly glad I'm not your patient. <laughs> I could be wrong, Mrs. Blake. Not quite, Leslie. Mrs. Blake, Rosemary will never be back. Johnny, how can you say that? Because there is no Rosemary. Johnny. She paid Paul Arnheim $1,000 to paint the portrait of an imaginary girl. I saw him this afternoon in San Francisco. Johnny. Mrs. Blake. I had to find your daughter to tell her that the whole thing was a mistake. Rosemary! Why did you do it, Mrs. Blake? You were right, Doctor. I couldn't have a child. Have you ever known what it is to be lonely? To want a child and not to be able to have one? Have you ever been so dreadfully unhappy that you'd permit nothing to come between you and what you wanted, even if it was only pretense? Yes, I created a daughter out of nothing, nothing but the great passion to have one. It took work, scheming, pain. It took lies, one more gigantic than the other. I kept moving from town to town just as often as I thought someone suspected the truth. And then your letter came, Johnny. It was the first time Rosemary had a bow. Can you blame me for encouraging you, Johnny? For wanting a few days of the joy of knowing what it was like to be a mother, to be loved. And then when you came to tell me that it was her mind you loved. You gave me the happiest day I've ever known. Because it was my mind you were talking about. You were loving me, Johnny. Can you forget and forgive an old lady? An old lady's foolish dreams. I think we can understand, Mrs. Blake. Well, Doctor, I suppose you are the lucky girl. The real one. Yes, and we're going to be married. Then let's celebrate. I have some imported wine. Well, let me help you. Oh, no, thank you. I'll do it myself. Your happiness. Thank you, Mrs. Blake. My thanks, too. Shall we drink? Wait a minute. Where's Miss Ivy? She's in bed. She hasn't been feeling very well lately. Well, let's call her anyway. After all, I'm not getting married every day in the week. I'll ask her to come down. Oh, I wouldn't disturb her. You're very fortunate, Doctor. I realize now how much Rosemary will lose. Mrs. Blake, you must give Rosemary up. Uh, yes, of course. Of course. Leslie! Leslie, come up here. When did they say the ambulance would get here? About an hour. 
Wasn't there anything you could do for her? No, Johnny. It was too late when I got to her. Doctor? Since you diagnosed the cause of poor Ivy's death as an overdose of Veronal, I hold you responsible. Now, wait a minute. Johnny. You've not only come between Rosemary and Johnny, but you've killed the one friend I had in the world. Mrs. Blake. Miss Ivy either committed suicide or... Or what? Or she was murdered. I do not understand you. It's very simple. You see, there was no Veronal in the mixture I prescribed for Miss Ivy. There was nothing stronger than a few grains of phenobarbital. The whole bottle wouldn't have killed a fly. But... but the labels... Miss Ivy needed psychiatric treatment more than medication. I gave her the one disguised as the other. I see. And there's nothing left for me to do but... to tell you that Ivy killed herself. I was trying to keep it from becoming generally known. How do you know? I know. She left me a letter. Please wait. I'll bring it to you. Where's the letter, Mrs. Blake? I have decided that there is no reason why you should see it. And please, now, will you be good enough to leave my house? Come on, let's go. Good night. Yes, darling. You got the keys? Why, no, they're in the car. That's funny. I don't remember locking it. Well, I'll get it from the other side. Johnny! <laughs> that was a narrow escape. I weighed five pounds more, it'd be crow bait by now. A fellow goes through Guadalcanal and... Johnny, look. A booby trap. She tried to kill us, Johnny. <sighs> Nothing stands in our way now. Police department. This is Mrs. Blake. Mrs. Morton Blake speaking. 33 Clifftop Road. There has just been an accident. Two people have fallen over the cliff. Dr. Ross and a friend of hers. They had just left my house. We'll just wait with you, Mrs. Blake, until they come. Rosemary, darling. Now you've got to help me. Help me. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> 